Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as Four Kids at One Four Seven, and I thought I'd um, just do a quick video. Well, we'll see how quick it is um, on what I do once I've finished a diamond painting. So I've currently finished this tree, um, and this was from Home Fun in a fifty by fifty. I will show a video of the finished product um, but I thought I'd show you what I do in regards to my diamonds etc once I've finished so um, this I'm not going to cut anything out of this video um, but you know by all means it's not going to be for everybody <coughs> excuse me so let's start with have I actually got a pack of labels open maybe I don't that's unusual so this is my spare drill storage I do have a video on that but it also houses all my other little bits like my labels so I'm not finding one that's already open which is unusual but it could have happened can't remember uh, so what I'm going to do firstly, they're my spare diamonds that are left over, is I'm just going to use the inventory sheet and I'm going to get my labels ready for going into my spare storage. Now, many people will use the same labels and by all means do. Um, I just have a certain way of labelling them up in my spare storage. So what I use is the DMC code. So the first one is 5200 and then I put a dash and I put S. And the reason I'm doing that for this diamond painting is because it was square drills. Now, I can see through the baggies that I use. However, this is a quick re reference as to whether they are round or square. Now, I do have a list of DMC codes and I do mark a little check mark as to whether I have them. That's just in case I need to go hunting for a spare colour or even a series of colours I know off the bat whether I have it and then I will go and look to see how many so all I'm doing at the moment is just labelling up all my DMC codes for this painting with a dash and a square and I know I can label them all up because I know I didn't run out of any so we're up to 772, 822. As I say, some people will just want to maybe work on peeling the stickers off, whatever their storage container is, and reuse them. Some people don't even keep their spare diamonds, and some people will just use maybe the storage system that they've used for the painting and just keep them that way. Whatever you do is what suits you and what is best for you. However, this is what I find works for me. And then all of my bags are labelled up in the same fashion, apart from they either have an S or they have an R. So that's all my labels prepared. Now, I am starting to keep hold of these inventory sheets. Um, I've not had to reference one. I've not had diamonds that fall, you know, fall off. So I've needed to, but the option's there if required. So for my baggies, um, I have provided links in my spare diamond storage to these bags but they're 2.25 by three, and I ordered them in a batch of a thousand, so I have absolutely plenty. So all I do is pop the label up in the top left-hand corner, and then I will tip the spare diamonds into it. So let's get these labeled up as quick as I can. Now I did label this diamond painting up to actually start doing it a little bit different to normal. I normally label the containers up in DMC order 
because I do reference the DMC number quite a bit when I'm thinking about it. However, for this diamond painting, I tried to be a little bit different and I actually labelled them up in order of the symbols. So I added a dash with the actual symbol because Home Fun, or at least on this diamond painting, only used numbers and letters. Um, I found it was quite easy to label them up that way. So that's what I did for this one. However, of course, putting them away, I will be using the DMC codes because they tend to be generic. So you may find there's different dye lots, which is a reason that I bag them up separately. I could have a look and if I've already got the colour, I could possibly pull out the bag and if the colour matches, I could tip it in with the others. That's something I just, I don't want to spend the time doing. Um, I find these bags for a thousand cost me under a fiver. In fact, I think it was under four pounds and that was posted. And it just keeps all of the same manufacturer or brand together. And then should anything happen and I do need to put a diamond back on a painting, I'm more likely to find the colour that matches. So we're nearly there. We've got 23 colours in this one. At least it's not one of them with uh, two boxes worth. I'm not too fussed about keeping them in number order at the moment. Sometimes I do. Um, but I will be doing a review of the finished painting and therefore I'll be showing you guys what diamonds I've got left in that video anyway. So that's all my labels on my baggies ready and then I do have three bags, only three, um, that are still sealed. For those I just tend to pop them in a bag on their own and I don't tend to add a label to these. Um, these are more likely to combine together but I do like them in the bags it helps me to monitor exactly how many of something I may have. So that's those so let's pop my spare bags out of that pack of a hundred away. So we've got those three that are in bags. If I've got multiple, they do lie the other way, so I will sort of stack them. So we've got 310, and I'll literally just peel back and tip. And that is pretty much all I'm gonna do for all of this. Now this is where it gets fun when I'm rebagging them up and the numbers aren't in order. And I'll just quite simply tip those in there and work my way across doing the same across all of my numbers and symbols. So that's three, three, four, eight. Now this one three, three, six, four, and I know I've got a four, six. So that's my six, four. And then we've got seven, four, six which is that one and there's one motor in so there's actually quite a few colours on here that I've not had before so I did get to mark off some of my oh I did get to mark off some more DMC numbers that I hadn't had before so that's quite an interesting way to sort of monitor your diamonds as well it sort of gives you a chance to to see you know what you've had before and what you haven't i'm sure there are that many different shades and some sellers may prefer one over another Got that one. and they do tip quite easily into these bags as you can see they just tip straight over and now I'm trying to find the one that's missing because I've nearly finished this one. 
Now this is my one that was an oily set of drills. Um, I'm sure I'll mention that in my painting review, but it was only one set and I did give them a wash. And my guess is some of them were still a little bit damp. Uh, once I've finished a container, I'll just quite simply peel off the stickers. These are these stickers I picked up from Hobbycraft. So they are called Blick. Um, they come with 175 white stickers. They're just in the stationery section of Hobbycraft. And they cost the grand sum of 80p. So I didn't find that they were too expensive. Especially when I can go through a few. Um, I have seen some on AliExpress. And I may well be ordering some from there. Uh, on a big roll of a few thousand. Just because and they're only a few pounds um, but I've not yet quite worked out my sizes for that one so this is another one done and this will mean that I will have this storage ready to use for my next diamond painting so we're getting there what else have we got let's go for let's go for doing it according to colour just to get some of these tubs emptied out and then we've got three three four six so to say this isn't the most exciting video I've done um, I find the unboxings the nicest ones in my opinion <coughs> but I know that some people are interested in you know not only do you how do you kit up a video but also how do you unkit a video or what do you do once you're done so i thought this is an ample opportunity i've finished a painting it's not stupid o'clock at night when i finish said painting um so let's just run through how i get things done and bagged up I did not have many of that one left at all, did I? Or this one, though I may have had, yeah, I've had a spare bag of this one, so really, in effect, I've got quite a bit of that one left. And some people may decide that, you know, they put those bags in with those. Some people may open them all up when they first get them. I do just like them staying in the bags partly because you know they're a bit more rigid and um, they stand up a little bit better in my storage um, but mainly because I then know how many I've got um, especially if somebody is asking on one of the websites for spare diamonds it's nice to know how many I've got left and whether I can help them out or not so I have done that a few times. It does depend on how busy my life is <laughs> um, as to whether I can commit to making sure that they get posted out to them quite quick. But I do like to, to do that because I have had instances in the past, only one luckily so far, but I have had an instance where I have been short of diamonds myself. Um, and somebody very kindly sent me a pack so that I could fill up the 20 that I needed. So I like to return the favour as and when time will allow. So the last one in that one and then we've just got four more. I'll get the stickers off these. I'm not cutting out any of this process it's not the quickest thing in the world it's not necessarily the slowest either especially if you pop something on the TV while you're doing it and then here's another one that's quite low 472 
only had a few diamonds of that one left. I suppose they sent me enough. Can't argue with that. Because the painting got finished. But there's definitely a few of them. They're a little bit closer to the wire than I'd like. About five, two, three. So I wouldn't say Home Fun send you 30% more diamonds. You definitely don't end up with as many left over. Oh, well, that was good for the last one, wasn't it? Um, you definitely don't end up with as many left over as I have done, for example, on an Ever Moment. But they did send enough, which means the kit was complete. Now, if many of you have watched my unboxing for this one, you will know that this isn't necessarily the picture that I ordered. However, I did complete it in case I was happy with this picture and therefore didn't need the company to send the right one. So there we go, that's this diamond painting unboxed. And what I'll do now is I will film the video that shows the picture and then I will pop back to this video, gotta love editing, um, and I'll show you what I do with these once I've filmed um, my post painting review. So I'll speak to you in a moment. Hi and I'm back. So I've just completed um, my video reviewing the diamond painting so that I could use the spares and I have organized them by number just to make it easier on you guys who are watching this. What I also did was I grabbed my drill checklist. Now this is this was created by a lovely lady on a Facebook group. Unfortunately I can't find which diamond painting Facebook group it was. Um, if I do find it again, I will pop a link in the comments. Um, but basically she created a drill checklist, drill checklist, slow down. Um, and it's got all the DMC numbers along with an S and an R for square and round. So what I did is I used my inventory sheet because they were in order and I went down and if it was a colour I didn't already have, then I marked it with a little X so that I do have just two sheets with a quick reference guide of all the spare drills that I do have in both square and round. So, pop that to the side. So then, it's quite a simple process in regards to my spare drill storage. Sometimes I do save these up and do them in bulk. Um, normally because I get them all bagged and ready and then I pop them back into one of these little clear bags until I've done my post painting review and then I will spend some time popping all of the diamonds away um, but in this case I've done the review within a couple of hours of actually finishing the painting so let's be very productive and get all the drills away so I have the five 200s at the front of my drills, um, but that's because the official DMC code has a B before it. Um, so it was just habit for me to put it at the beginning before the numbers started. And then as you can see, I have loads of 310s in various different manufacturers. So all I'm gonna do is just drop that in with the rest. It really is that simple. So we've got 414, I'm going to drop that in with the rest, and 415, and occasionally they just need a little shuffle so that they sit down, and then we've got 470. Now I do happen to have all the numbers labelled up on these, because I already have the stickers written out for trying the baseball card type folders. However, I found they didn't work for me, um, mainly due to the likes of the volumes of my 310s. So I just reuse the stickers, which means that when I come to this one, like 523, that I didn't have any, 
I already have a slot for it, even if it didn't have any diamonds in it. Again, with 581, it's already got a home, even if it's not moving in with anybody. And occasionally, they're stuck together because there is a gap. So, just want to confirm that one is 613, yep. Yeah. And then I tend to put it behind. 648, I have two bags because I have the bags of the diamonds that were left over and the bag of spares, so I'm gonna pop them in. And same with 746, I have both. So I'm gonna pop both of them in that gap. Oh, and I didn't have any of those, so that's a nice other color to add. 772, I've already got some square. They are very similar in colour, possibly a slight difference. Rather than trying to get the good light and to make sure that they, whether they do match or they don't match, I find it's just so much easier to just pop them in a separate bag and be done. And then I can check what shading or what colours I need when it gets to the point if I do need the spares. So that's all my up to 900. So let's move that box out of the way. And then I do have a second box due to the volume. Um, I know some people, I know one lovely lady who's been commenting um, and having a little bit of a chat on one of my videos um, she has separate boxes one for round one for square and she has one for special shapes it may or may not get to the point where I do split those up but at the moment I'm finding I don't so much mind them mixed together um, because I've labelled up the bags to say which one. And then for my spare ones, my my crystal ones, sorry, I just have them in bags at the back. Um, I wasn't that keen on the crystal paintings myself. Um, I didn't find that I liked them as much as I thought. So I think the two that I've had one which is finished and one which isn't. I think that will probably be it for me for those. So I'm not too precious about them needing to be all labelled up according to colour. And then this last one is going to be right at the end, isn't it? 3866, and it is. We've got a load of 3865 and here's some 3866. So there we go, that is the last stage. All my diamonds are now away in my spare storage should anything happen. I've got all my extra little tool bits and stuff in case I need them. And then I will pop those away. I'll pop my drill checklist sort of with my diamond painting things. And I'll also pop the inventory sheet just in case I need it for reference because it's already printed so why not and that's the end of that painting I've now got a nice empty container sticker free and I'm going to get my next one set up so thank you so much for joining me on this video I hope it's been helpful and not too much of a tedious task but um, it's there for people if they want to see it so thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon